close some tabs that would help hello it says that we're live so i guess that's it okay all right so welcome to another no cd live with ocd advocates where you can ask questions about ocd and we'll give you our best shot at answering them um we both have lived experience with ocd so if anything we can definitely relate but um, my name is Elise. I run The Octopus, which is an OCD advocacy and recovery shop. Um, it focuses on empowering people in their recovery um, and also teaching the world more about what having OCD is really like because people tend to say that it is something else than what we actually experience, and that's very problematic. Um, and I've had OCD since I was a kid, so we're going on like 15 years of this <laughs> so lots of experience to talk about there um and zoe do you want to introduce yourself yeah i'm zoe my pronouns are she her um i volunteer with uh ocd game changers on the young adult committee and i also do o ocd advocacy on my own there's my ocd advocacy account at ocd bravery and I've also had OCD since I was a kid and uh, fit the average stat of taking about 17 years to get properly diagnosed. So yeah. oh, I love that. <laughs> um, what else was I going to say? I am also on the board of OCD Game Changers and I'm the director for Young Adult Initiatives. But um, And then this is my friend who's going to be mm -hmm. hanging out with us. How do I get him in the shot? It's like backwards. So wherever I try to go, it's the wrong way. This is my friend. He is a stuffed pink elephant. If anyone's familiar with the pink elephant example used in OCD therapy a lot, which shows you that you should not suppress your thoughts because if you try not to think of a pink elephant, it's all you can think about. Um, this just got here today. It's actually a fundraiser that my shop is doing. Um, if you buy one, one will be donated to a child that's in residential treatment. Um, and for example, one of the places that we're sending them to is Rogers Behavioral Health in Wisconsin. So if you are interested in that, you can go to the handle that is listed next to my name and then go to the link in our bio and it'll bring you to the shop. Or you can go to our website, which is... Okay, I sent it. It's www.theoctopus.com. Okay, so now we will get to your questions. Oh, wow, there's a lot of questions. All right. Okay, let's see. All right, I'll go first then. Actually, let me read what I'm getting into first. Okay, sorry, this is a long question. The three parter here, the yeah. <clears throat> okay, it sounded like that person was just venting about their experience, which I can understand. They were talking about how they have a lot of um intrusive thoughts, uh, with the words I wish, um, in front of them about harm and illness, um, and it happens towards anyone at any time. And it's hard for them to accept that part of their OCD because it makes them feel like a monster. Um, and they recently became, well, they, maybe they had children before, but they recently had a child. Um, so I can definitely understand that being even more distressing when you have young children around you and you're having thoughts like that. So I definitely understand. And I do think that that is a difficult thing for people to accept with OCD, especially those taboo intrusive thoughts, um, because it's really hard to just move past them and not give them significance because it feels like you're doing something wrong. Yeah, so I can definitely relate to that and wishing that you didn't have the thoughts, but I can definitely tell you that you're not alone and that there is treatment available that can hopefully help with that. And I give you a lot of props for being a mom and dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I relate to the harm OCD thoughts. And it can even feel like irresponsible at first when you're starting ERP for the harm OCD and you just feel like you should be doing more. But yeah, it's it kind of gets better with time. 
Yeah, I also thought it was interesting noting that the thoughts sometimes start with I wish because I feel like at first I read that a lot of people's thoughts started with what if and then I got mm -hmm. freaked out that mine were more like commands, mm -hmm. like do this or I would love to do this even though I would not love to do whatever X, Y, Z thought is happening. Mm -hmm. But I think that's important to... Um, because a lot of people will say, what if this happens? But sometimes intrusive thoughts don't sound like that. They sound a lot more direct. Let's see. You want to read the next one? Sure. Can OCD make you question over and over if you want the content of your thoughts? I think so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because you can often like wonder, is this actually OCD or do I want this? And then I think that's called like meta OCD or obsessing about obsessing. Like and you, and you spend so much time compulsively trying to figure out, is this OCD or is this real? Yeah. And the more you try to figure it out, the less certain you are about how you feel. So like the more you check for your check your feelings and like try to figure out how you feel the less your natural feelings um are able to be deciphered or figured out um i definitely have had issues with this um where it wasn't even about the thought itself it was about if i liked it or if i wanted that and trying to figure out if i wanted it and then you just fall down this hole of like weird feelings and you're like what are the real feelings and the fake feelings and all this stuff so uh i i did a lot better when i ignored the urge to do that even though it's really really tempting um it doesn't actually solve anything and it actually feels much worse than just getting through the urge to figure out how you feel and just moving on to something else. It depends on the theme though. Cause like with ROCD, I definitely could still get caught in that. So, but I definitely can relate to that problem. That's what I was thinking of too. It like takes you away from the actual experience of like being with that person or doing that acti activity or whatever it is that you're yeah. focusing on. I feel like with ROCD, that's relationship OCD, by the way, which is when it's focused more on like your relationship with someone else um that's the one where i'm like it's okay to try to figure out how i feel because that's normal everyone tries to figure out how they feel but it's definitely mm -hmm. you you i know that it's ocd for me and not what other people are doing yeah it's like the extent of it or like how much time yeah 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 let's see where do you find the willpower to do erp especially without a therapist um that is a great question, um, especially because therapy is not accessible to everybody. Um, for me, I do best doing exposures when they're tied to my values, like very strongly. Um, for example, I do really like to travel, but I also have a metaphobia and um, traveling, <laughs> traveling is a little difficult because it usually involves different modes of transportation um, and I get car sick and motion sick pretty easily so for me um i feel like if it's an exposure that you don't have enough motivation to do it's like i would try to look at what you can do to make it even closer to your values like um that that's what i do personally mm -hmm. any thoughts zoe yeah, I agree. Like having some kind of motivation that ties in with that particular theme, like something that you want to be able to do again or do for the first time. And just like taking it in small, manageable steps. Like you can kind of do, write out your hierarchy of ERP and start with the ones that do seem manageable and kind of work your way up. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point too. I think motivation is important. <laughs> that's my problem. I can find things that I really want to do, but I don't make the step small enough that mm -hmm. it seems manageable. So I think motivation and it being manageable. It's a good, mm -hmm. sounds good to me. Okay. Great. Right. Can you talk about how ERP could apply to misophonia? Mm, I don't know a lot about misophonia. Is that like, you don't like the sounds around you or? Um, so, I don't know why I'm totally blanking right now, but 
the way I really can't think right now. Okay, misophonia. I because I feel like I'm. I definitely don't feel comfortable answering. Actually, no, I'll give it a shot. But misophonia is like you tend to get like very hung up on a on sounds or like different act, little actions that people are doing. Um, and usually people will try to avoid. I feel like I could be wrong. So if anyone wants to correct me. Well, there's, the there's another comment actually by this person. I just scrolled down a bit. Oh, okay. Um, in particular, suddenly being hypersensitive to certain sounds and being distressed about not being able to stop noticing them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that actually sounds like sensory motor. I was thinking about that too. Yeah. 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 Um, well, let's see. I, I have misophonia like to a mm -hmm. mild degree. Um, and I do know that some of the common, some of the common things I've heard are that like people with misophonia might be tempted to try to get away from the sounds. And even if it is, mm -hmm. well, sensory motor, I think has to be about yourself, but if this person's talking about outside, like external sounds, um, I would have to guess that the recommendation would be to tolerate the feelings of distress being around the sound. So going definitely avoiding the sound is probably not what you would want to do just because, you know, anytime it's OCD treatment, it's the opposite of what your urge is to do mm -hmm. um, to show yourself that you can handle it. Um, yeah, I would say it's probably staying there and noticing how you feel and then you would probably notice over time that you do eventually like desensitize to it, but you have to stay around it long enough for mm -hmm. that to happen. Yeah. And like identify the things that you are doing compulsively. Yeah. Whether it's like avoidance or even certain other things that you might be doing that are really, really subtle. I found that with ERP, like the, one of the biggest challenges, like noticing all the compulsions that I'm doing. <laughs> oh, good times. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, so that's my best idea with misophonia. I'm not super familiar with what people do, but that's what I've heard of other people doing. Okie dokie. Any tips or support you have with those struggling with sexual orientation OCD? Um, I feel like a lot of the tips and support um, are the same between all of the themes, which is good in case the OCD comes back at some point. Um, if you manage to get through one theme, it's good because then you can apply the same thing to other themes. But um, so with sexual orientation OCD, it would be important to figure out what compulsions you're doing regarding your sexuality. Um, maybe it's avoiding dating. Maybe it's dating a lot to try to figure out what your sexuality is. Maybe it's Googling things. Um, so it would be to identify those things and try not to figure out what your sexuality is. Um, just trying to go about your life and directing your attention back to things that you value or what you're supposed to be doing. I remember at one point I was pro I had like a one and a half hour commute to work and I'm pretty sure I would spend the commute both ways ruminating about my sexual orientation, trying to figure mm -hmm. it out like both directions of the drive. So I can definitely relate to this one but um what would have been good is maybe to listen to music or do something like notice that i was thinking about that and then maybe like listen to a podcast or at least try to interrupt the rumination as an example but you don't want to try you don't want to spend time trying to figure out what your orientation is yeah that sounds great like kind of pulling your mind away from that rumination even if it's like feels like you're just doing it over and over again just constantly redirecting your mind because i think it does get easier with time as you start to like teach your mind not to do that yeah i <laughs> i know i tend to forget mm -hmm. like it, i'll like pull myself out of rumination once and then i'm like oh my god i can't believe i'm still thinking about this again <laughs> and it's like that really isn't that surprising because that is like that's the natural urge right now and you're kind of retraining yourself to do something else but yeah I, I feel like I constantly am like oh no look back the other way don't look that way like stop ruminating do something else yeah totally and with these things I think it, it's like 
we're, we're kind of talking about like, oh, think about whether you're doing things like not dating at all or like dating way more than you want to be. And it's hard when you're struggling with OCD to think like, what do I even want to do? Like, what is a normal yeah. amount of this? Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like it's important to not just like, like seek reassurance and advice about like, how often should I be doing this? But like, if you can kind of like, when you're not as bothered by OCD, maybe you've like slept a lot, maybe it's just not bothering you that much in the moment, just like think about, or I don't know if this is bad advice, but I would be like, okay, what do I decide is like a normal and reasonable amount for me? And then I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I want to go on one date a week or something. Like I definitely do that with my like compulsions. I'm like, what is a normal amount of times to check like the lab equipment and check that it's turned off? I'm like, okay, I'll do it when I leave the equipment and then I'll do it when I leave the room. And I just like kind of set ground rules for myself because you need mm-hmm. to uh, plan for like what you think is good and what you think is a compulsion so that you can at least decide which is which, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, let's see. Okay. We do have another question. Um, Zoe, I don't know if you understand this question. I was going to ask if this person could re. Oh wait. Did we ever go back up after we skipped down to that person? Uh, Yeah, we did. Okay. We did. Um, uh, do you understand this question? If not, maybe that person could rewrite it. And then if the false note doesn't manifest, what do I do then? I think it's like, oh, my ERP fear came true. Like my OCD fear came true. Is that? That's what it sounds like to me. But maybe if that person could confirm okay. if that's what they mean, just because I don't want to answer it all. Yeah, we answer, yeah, answer that. That's not what they mean. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, hang on. Okay. Um, I'm looking at Elizabeth S. Okay. So um, it's a two-part question. So I'm going to put the second part. Actually, it's your question. Do you want to read it? Okay, sure. (laughs) So, hi, I have really bad acid reflux. And my doctor said it's just that and put me on a strong med for it. But I keep getting pains in my shoulders and chest. And I can't stop obsessing every time I feel them and wanting to look up symptoms. How do I deal with health OCD when it could be real? Relatable. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this is bad. I'm like, I don't know if I have advice for this one. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah, go for it. Um, I have a lot of issues with mm-hmm. this, too, because I have multiple chronic health issues. And I tend to argue with people in my life um, that I'm less able to do things. And they're like, no, I think you can do more. I think your OCD is like mm-hmm. getting involved in it. And I'm like, no, 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 I shouldn't do anything. Um. So I do think one thing is to try to challenge yourself to do something that you think you might not be able to do. Um, that's kind of hard when it's pain, though, because it's like pain mm-hmm. is real. I mean, it's, all of it's real, like OCD is real, et cetera. But um, I guess one thing I would say in this situation is you could definitely delay the compulsion, like... Um, try and go do something else and d- do it with the pain mm-hmm. instead of tr- like always worrying about getting rid of the pain. Like, um, for example, I feel like if I had pain or some other uncomfortable feeling, I'd have trouble like watching a movie because I almost feel like I would need to pay attention to what I feel like it's hard or like going to hang out with friends or something like that. It's hard mm-hmm. for me to because I feel like I need to pay attention to it and not pay attention to anything else. So that could be one thing is like, um, like, Oh, if this, if I still feel like this by tomorrow, I'll call the doctor, but make sure that it's farther out than like what you actually want to do or else it's not challenging the OCD. So if you're like, I want to call the doctor right now, then maybe you'd be like, I'll, I'll call the doctor at the end of the week if this hasn't helped. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I totally agree with that. Because in this case, it's kind of overlapping with things that you actually maybe need to do. Like the the urge to a compulsion is kind of overlapping with like, oh, maybe I actually do need to see the doctor. So I think in that case, it's like, yeah, delay the compulsion or like contain it, like kind of shorten it. Like once you have that doctor call, you're like, okay, it's out of my hands right now. I'm just going to go to the appointment, see what happens. So yeah, just delaying it, containing it. There's something else also like, I guess, spoiling the compulsion after, if you find yourself doing a lot of compulsions automatically, then kind of trying to reintroduce uncertainty, like, oh, maybe it is though. Maybe I don't know for sure what it is. So that might help a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that sounds good. Um, all right, let's see. I'm just looking at the next question. All right, let's see. So next question is, help, I've been struggling with OCD for three months now, and the sight of pubic hair makes me want to wash my hands aggressively and thought of somehow touching it lying around gives me a lot of anxiety. Um, I definitely would recommend if you are able to work with a therapist to give you ideas of exposure mm -hmm. around that theme. Um, I can already think of many things they would probably <laughs> ask you to do um, in incre incremented steps that would make it easier for you um, to challenge yourself. But um, definitely avoiding it is not going to help. So whether you're in treatment or not, um, I would definitely try to limit adding any more compulsion. So avoiding it, um, don't wash your hands anymore like try to either lessen it maybe even just by one time of washing your hands or shortening the amount that you're washing your hands or something like that but i would try to work with a therapist on that just to get like better specific exposure ideas Mm -hmm. yeah totally agreed and don't be like afraid of erp therapy because a, a good therapist will start you off like reasonably like manageably so maybe just pictures maybe talking about it like whatever step seems manageable at first and it's good that you're already like reaching out for help after only three months so that's really great yeah no mm -hmm. for sure uh i wanted to thank this person who said that the elephants were a great initiative um here it is again for anyone who wasn't here before you buy one it donates one to a child in ocd residential treatment at theoctopus.com. Anyway. I want to see the tail. I just saw the tail for the first time from the back. Uh, oh. my, this is the prototype. So this tail is different colors than the actual one, but it's the same, you know. Just, it's like frilly. All premise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I mean, that might get me kicked off these forever. Um, but anyway, and Tia said that she loves us both. Hi, Tia. Yeah. Tia runs some of the no CD uh, support groups, which are very good. I would check them out. And they're free. Who doesn't love free support? I do. All right, let's see. I think it's your turn. Okay. Hello to both. Hello to you both. I'm wondering what I can do if I have uncomfortable feelings. For example, my heart rate right now due to not knowing why something happened to me or unknown sensations. Yeah, that's really relatable. Yeah, there's a lot of like physical symptoms of anxiety. I get a lot of like stomach aches, uh, even headaches if like my thoughts are racing a lot. Um, I don't know, uncomfortable sensations. <laughs> Just bear with them. I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you have any advice, please? <laughs> uh, that's the problem with these questions. Sometimes I'm like, I have the same question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering what I can do. Uh, I feel like it's kind of similar to what I said before mm -hmm. um, to the person who said, what if your health OCD is real? Like about something mm -hmm. that's real. Um, just that you want to also direct yourself towards doing other things. Um, it sounds like you're you might be ruminating about your heart racing or you're having trouble pulling your attention away from it. Um, so trying to do something that requires you to pull your attention away mm -hmm. would be a good way to challenge that. Um, I also like, I have had a lot of trouble with 
physical symptoms of anxiety, especially heart rate and feeling like I couldn't breathe was one a lot when I was younger. Um, I'd feel like I couldn't breathe. And honestly, I got so used to delaying mm-hmm. the compulsion that I'd just be like, well, if I actually can't breathe, I guess I'll find out like really soon. And then I just go back to being on the computer, even though I still felt like I couldn't breathe. But yeah, I definitely that that's tough. But I think trying to bring your attention to something else would be a good challenge. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. All right, we got some in the moment questions. All right, is it, it's my turn. Um, my son was recently diagnosed with OCD. My coworker is being quarantined for COVID. He is currently pacing the floor and asking me over and over if I have it. How can I help him tonight? Oh, I can relate to this. Um, so it's really great that you're on here trying to figure out how you can help your son, by the way. Um, one thing, honestly, it was really, it's hard for the person on the other end. But um, a big a thing that made a big difference in my family when I was younger with OCD was that my parents did not give reassurance. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's hard to hear them continue to ask over and over. But honest and the honest answer Mm -hmm. is that you don't know if you have it. Like you could have COVID, you could not. But um, you'll your your family will handle it whatever way it goes but Mm -hmm. definitely not repeating that you don't have it because in reality you don't know and also it's Mm -hmm. not helpful for your son um because he needs to learn to tolerate not knowing the answer and -hmm. that's why he keeps asking you because he wants to be sure and really you can't be sure but um so some things people say are like I know this is making you really anxious. Like, I see that. Like, do you want to come sit down? Maybe we can do something else, like watch a movie. Um, Or I'm trying to think. You have any ideas what people say? No, that sounds really great. Like, validating the emotion and how challenging it is is totally fine and helpful. Um, What else? Uh... Yeah, I think it's okay to have like a gentle call for not not a distraction, but like a gentle call to move on to something else. Yeah, Yeah. I honestly usually need the push by Mm -hmm. someone else being like, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. Why don't we go do something else? Because I won't always catch Mm -hmm. it. I'll just keep thinking and ruminating out loud about it. But so hopefully Mm -hmm. that helps. I'm a little excited on a separate note for them to move the webinars to Mondays because I feel like by Thursday I'm fried. <laughs> I'm like trying to answer these questions and I'm like, I know, I know there's an answer to this. I just can't think of what it is. All right, let's see. Tia, hello. What are ways that people can help with your shop's pink elephant fundraiser if they can't afford to buy an elephant currently? This is an interesting question. Um, Yeah, so one way you could help is definitely spreading the word. Um, Just in general, we have a whole, a lot of of advocates are going to be posting on Instagram Mm -hmm. about it. Um, You could share the page that the elephants are on, um, on the website, and that will help Mm -hmm. um, get the word out to other people who might be able to purchase elephants, and then they still get the donation to... Um, children with OCD. I'm like, I should have more answers for this question. But um, yeah, I think that would be a great way to get involved. Just helping me to spread the word will help get more people to buy, which in turn helps more kids get the donation. So I would appreciate Mm -hmm. anyone even just talking about it. You don't have to buy one to help the cause. Mm -hmm. Let leave that to the people with the money. (laughs) Sounds like a great answer. Yeah, sharing about the shop, sharing about the story in particular, because it's a really cool story and like uh, goal as well. And there's also some other really cute stuff on the shop. Um, Like there's a pink elephant sticker. I have that (laughs) by my keys because I always want to do like a bunch of checking right before I leave my house. And then I take my keys and I look at my sticker and I'm like, not today. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I do love when people tell me that 
they relate the stick. It's usually the stickers, but they relate the stickers directly to what they have OCD about. Like I know some people have put them in their car because they have a lot of compulsions when they drive and things like that. I do have one on my phone. Mine's in, this is an advocacy one. It says OCD is not obsessive Christmas disorder. So even I'm just standing there waiting for my food and I'm texting, someone's probably like, what does that say? Oh, I love that that one has the word OCD in it because I want to get one that has the like word OCD in it for my laptop so that it can be like a conversation starter. But yeah. I have to embrace uncertainty on my laptop because I get a lot of obsessions about like career choices and mm. then I'm just, like, embrace uncertainty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I can relate. And the pink elephant um is really nice because it is something that i think kids and adults can understand um the pink elephant example quickly again for anyone who hasn't heard it um it's used in ocd therapy a lot um it's if i sat here and i was like you can think of anything right now but don't think of a pink elephant you probably weren't thinking of a pink elephant until i said it well maybe you were because we've been talking about it but normally <laughs> You weren't thinking of a pink elephant until I said it. And then when you're trying not to think of it, the idea of not thinking about it actually brings it back into your mind. <clears throat> so trying not to do that or trying to do that with things you don't want to think about, like maybe like taboo intrusive thoughts like pedophilia, harm, etc. cetera, um, washing your hands, anything like that. Um, if you try not to think about it, you'll think about it more. So you need to be open to having any thought that really comes into your mind but yeah i learned that example as a kid so it's pretty cool to have like a stuffed animal version of it um let's see okay <laughs> Anna is coming for me with this question. Oh no. Oh no. Currently me. I don't know whose turn it is. Either way. All right. Why don't you go then? Okay. This is too can, real. Can obsessively trying to fix OCD make it worse? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Um, I I think I might be in this category because mm -hmm. I like <laughs> a bad sign too is that I was talking to a therapist on an intake and I was kind of explaining everything and they were like, so what do you actually want out of therapy? And I was like, it doesn't really sound like I don't know what I'm doing. It sounds like I know exactly what the issue is and exactly how to fix it. But I just feel like not being in therapy means that I'm not mm -hmm. taking care of the OCD enough. So I have to fix it. And I'm like, can, I'm always like, can I be more recovered? Like, mm. is there more recovery than this? Like, is there a next level that I can yeah. reach? But not in like a way where it's like, I'm empowered in a way that I'm like, I must do this right because there's unknown potential that I must reach. Uh, I feel like that's like an existential OCD thing because I have that too. You're like, I'm not living the right life though. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, there must be a even less OCD life. And as I'm saying it here, it sounds like all that does is keep me in the OCD cycle where I don't feel relief from OCD, mm -hmm. even if I've managed it with other themes. So it keeps it around, I would say. So true. I feel like another part of this that actually Tia talks a lot about in the groups is like um, kind of building up the rest of your life. Like what is your life apart from OCD, which <laughs> I found really helpful in the groups, like things that are totally separate, just hobbies that you have and like values that you have and things that make you you and your own goals that are not just like to get rid of all the or to fix all the like flaws of OCD, but instead just to like I think it's, I don't know, some metaphor about like planting things, not just ripping out the weeds. <laughs> but, mm, yeah. yeah, that's a that's a good one. I am mm. like all about ripping out the weeds. Me too. <laughs> I plant no flowers or food or anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, this is an interesting question to follow up with after the last one. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know if you're progressing with your OCD recovery? I feel like <laughs> this is what I want to know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm only half kidding. But um, I think feeling 
you know, that might not be true. Feeling more confident that you're able to handle distress. Like, I'm more willing to take risks because I know that I can handle if it goes wrong. Not that I don't know that it's not going to go wrong. I just know that I will handle it no matter what happens because I can tolerate distress and get through it. Mm-hmm. So that's one example. What about you, Zoe? Yeah, I think like being able to do things that I couldn't do before. Like uh, I was watching this show again that I remembered that I started watching like before I knew that I had OCD, but I definitely had OCD and it had like a lot of knives and gore and I just like couldn't watch it. And then I started watching it again. I was like, oh, I can totally do this. And it ended up being like a really interesting show so far. So just like doing things that you couldn't do before, like certain book titles, which just really, really trigger me. But then I'm like, I really want to read this book and I really like the author. So just like being able to do more things. Also, like it is, I think it's normal that when you start ERP, you get kind of new obsessions. Like it's almost like your OCD is like trying to find a way to still cling on. So I think that's a normal part of like OC recovery is just like having new themes pop up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man. I'm still hung up on the question about perfect OCD recovery. My brain's like, we got to figure out perfect OCD (laughs) recovery and this webinar. (laughs) How do you know when it's OCD and when it's not? Womp womp. Mm -hmm. I read this and I was like, you don't. Yeah. You don't just got to take a good guess and try to not do compulsions about figuring out whether or not it's OCD, like checking constantly. Did that feel like it was OCD? Yeah. And I mean, without knowing more context to this, it's kind of hard to say to um, like, if it depends too on what you're talking about. But if you're trying to figure out if like, I'm like, there's so many examples coming to mind that I don't really want to say live on air recorded on the internet forever. So I'm trying to trying to think of something. (laughs) Um, It's like trying to figure out if it's like a heart attack or if it's OCD slash health anxiety. Um, For me, trying to figure out which one it was would have led to a lot of trips to the emergency room. Like it would have been very expensive because I had that happen over and over and over again. So instead going back to what I was doing actually made it so that it happened less in the long run, or at least it made me less concerned when it did happen because I had managed it before. (laughs) This is a tough question. It really is. Yeah. Cause then you're also like, is this person like just starting out OC recovery? And it's yeah. like, how do I just know if it's an intrusive thought? Like, I'm like, Joey, you have invited us all down the road of rumination. I'm like, I don't know what the answer to this question is. I need to figure it out, but I don't. Maybe it's OCD. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You don't know. Sorry. Uh, let's see. How can you? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. This is a tough one that I've dealt with before. Okay. How can you handle overwhelming panic to triggers you can't get away from? Like when your OCD is related to your family. Yeah, that is tough. I guess ERP as always, like in relation to those things that, you know, that you need to be a part of your life or even just things that you want to be a part of your life, like family, you know? Um, so yeah, ERP specifically around that, probably. What do you think? Yeah, I do think, um, I feel like Jenna overbaw is in my head right now. It's like, Mm -hmm. if you, she posted something today about if you treat something, like, if you treat something like it's something your brain should protect you from, it's going to keep doing that. Um, so like avoid, if you keep avoiding family it's gonna make you feel you're still gonna feel panic around them like the best way through the panic is to stay near the triggers and not try to get away from them like your family um yeah it's difficult um the one thing i will say which is not (laughs) all right so it's not 
OCD specific advice, but one thing I did learn um, from DBT, which is a different kind of therapy, is um, if you're like really over the top panicking, like many, many f- physiological symptoms, um, I like holding ice can help or something like very cold. Um, and I do that. And it's like, because even with ERP, right, when we do the exposures, they're kind of on a hierarchy. And maybe like being near your family is like a 10 instead of it being like a mm-hmm. four and like it's really high. Um, so using like a physiological hack to bring it down for me maybe brings it into like ERP doable territory rather than mm-hmm. just like this is too much. I'm going to compulse everywhere because I don't mm-hmm. know what to do. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I need to learn more about DBT. <laughs> oh god okay let's see i only did it three times before it stuck so no worry <laughs> dbt is a six month program so i did that like three times tips for also probably wanted to know dbt perfectly because of ocd oops <laughs> <laughs> oh, tips for a stressful erp day i always like to have a nice meal or some sort of treat if I do something difficult um or watching tv like something to de-stress after you've done it um making just making sure that you also give yourself time to do something relaxing Mm -hmm. totally rest like making sure you're sleeping enough especially if you're doing erp like every day for a while definitely need to rest Hannah's killing me with these questions. (laughs) (laughs) Hannah and I are on similar OCD wavelengths. Um, How do you find the difference between repression and redirection? I'm not sure what they mean. Do you know? Uh, I'm going to guess they're talking about like when you have a thought like repressing how you feel like trying to distract yourself and avoid and redirecting yourself to something else yeah honestly one difference i look for is um what do i want to do because if i want to not think about something Mm -hmm. then that's repression and if i want to think about it but i have to pull myself away then that's redirection so, like, for example, there are some things that when I, they come into my head, I want to keep thinking about them. Like, for example, the perfect OCD recovery. I want to think about that. <laughs> I don't want to avoid, like, I want to, I, I want to think about it and figure mm-hmm. it out. And that I would need to be redirected. The more challenging thing for me to do would be to do, to talk to someone about something that's not that. Mm-hmm. Um. Or like running this webinar when really I just feel like the better thing to do would be to go work on that. But that's one thing. No, I'm fine. We're here. But and then repression is more like um, when I used to have harm OCD thoughts, I would be like, I don't want to think about this. I'm going to watch TV. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep all day so that I don't have to think about it. Um, So for me, staying awake was like, the more Mm -hmm. difficult thing because I wanted to repress it, if that makes sense. So I think that really is the only, that's the only difference I can really describe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Like some things you just have that like urgent compulsive need to either, yeah, avoid or just like constantly think about. So that's good to be mindful of because yeah, either of those could be a compulsion. Yeah, I feel honestly with OCD treatment, it's always doing the opposite of whatever you have the intense, desperate urge mm-hmm. to do. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> oh, no. This person has something that I have also. <laughs> uh, actually, it's not really a question. It's just them talking. But what they were saying was that they have this pressure that they have to make sure they enjoy whatever I'm doing, um, which I do. And it also got cut off. But I do that, too. I'm like, I can't waste any time. And I didn't even realize that was OCD until somewhat recently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Ugh. Alrighty. Here we go. I had a four-year relationship that ended because of relationship OCD. I'm finally mm. receiving treatment for it, but I realized that my OCD is at it my worst because I was using her as a crutch. Any advice? Yeah, that's really difficult. I've mm. definitely um, used people as like the main way that I coped with the anxiety from OCD. So that's very difficult. Um, I will say it does usually, it has usually gotten better with time because I've had to sit through the distress of it without them. Yeah. Um, which is good that the advice would be to, my advice is to make sure that you don't try to find a new person to do the exact mm -hmm. same thing too, because it's more valuable for you to learn to sit with it on your own than like going to a new friend or new family member, a new romantic partner. Mm -hmm, totally. Yeah. Just like realizing that this is the pattern or the habit and then giving yourself time to like break that habit and to let your brain adjust to a new way of doing things. Yeah. Like this is your chance to develop new coping skills, mm -hmm. like um, redirecting yourself or mm -hmm. I don't know. It depends on what you're going through, but it is, this is a good opportunity. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. Can being paranoid go hand in hand with OCD? Uh, I think so with certain things, magical thinking, maybe. Um, yeah. Good for it. So I'm not totally, I'm not, sorry, I was reading other things that are commented too, but um, I'm not totally sure what you mean by being paranoid, I guess, is kind of what makes this question hard for me to answer. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it depends on like your definition of paranoid, certain things I could understand. Like for instance, like fear of medication might be like a common thing for people with OCD, which is like kind of straddling between like potentially somebody might call that paranoia versus just like intense fear of contamination. I think where paranoia mm, kind of goes in with OCD is um, people can feel paranoid, but they know that it's irrational and un it mm. unlikely. Okay. Mm -hmm. They know that it's like a little off for them to feel that way. Like it's not a super warranted feeling. Like it's kind of irrational where like maybe paranoia and something like schizophrenia or something like that. Um, I don't think people who are in an episode when they have schizophrenia can really always tell that it's not rational mm -hmm. but that's like really tricky i always find that really tricky when people are talking about ocd and they're like they know it's irrational i'm like do i which maybe that means i have ocpd i don't know but well i'll let you know i'll get back <laughs> uh let's see mm. Uh, okay. Uh, what would you suggest when daily morning ritual those for people who are suffering with moderate OCD? So I didn't fully understand this question. If you could try to rewrite it, mm -hmm. um, that would be helpful. Let's see. Okay. I like this question. Mm. Where do you find the support group? Is that the one we were talking about before? Like, I know probably, we probably. I think those mm -hmm. are the only support groups we've mentioned. But if you Google no CD free support groups, they usually come up for me, and that's how I get there. They're mm -hmm. also in the app. I don't know exactly where. Yeah, I think they used to be called community discussion groups. I don't know if that's still their name on the app. But um, you can, if you Google no CD free support groups, it, it usually comes up saying online support. Yeah, it usually comes up and you just like type in your email so that in your email inbox, you get like the link to join. And there's a lot of different times. So, and different like types of groups as well. Mm -hmm. 
Alrighty. Oop, I see PBF community groups and the no CD app. <laughs> I read the end of this first. All right. For people who have been through ERP treatment with success, how do you deal with a fear of relapse? Your answer is going to be accept the uncertainty. <laughs> LOL. Yes, it is. You have to mm. keep living your life, doing what you want to do. Uh, when you relapse, mm. worry about it then. Mm. Well, I mean, you're I, not saying to just stop worrying about it because that's not <laughs> how worrying works, but mm. don't, there's nothing to be done mm. for a relapse until you're relapsing, if that makes sense. Like sense. anything you do in preparation for the relapse is a compulsion, probably. Mm. <laughs> so do what you would do if you weren't fearing a relapse. Yeah, I feel like community helps, like having friends with OCD. But I guess maybe doing that from a place of like wanting to connect with people rather than like compulsively collecting friends with OCD. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it has the fringe benefit of helping mm. helping protect you in the case of relapse. Oh, man. <laughs> Another good one. Another fave. I like to worry about relapsing, even though I'm pretty sure I'm not even out of the original relapse. So <laughs> no worries. Okay. Have you guys ever dealt with the do I even have OCD thoughts and how do you deal with this? Sorry, you ju I just did the last question so you can do this one. Yeah. Yes, I do. Especially because like, probably because of the stereotypes that we have about OCD. Uh, sometimes that gets in my head and I'm like, is this all just made up though? Um, yeah, for sure. That's part of the uncertainty, I think. And yeah, I think it's, it's common fairly common I think for people with OCD to like wonder that um and also to wonder about other like mental health stuff that's or physical mean. health stuff yeah I had physical health issues and I that is where I find myself being like what if I don't actually have this and I've tricked mm -hmm. everyone into thinking I have this yeah. somehow yeah I like the little moniker that OCD is the doubting disorder once mm. I heard that I was like mm, that I relate yeah. to that I, I can doubt literally anything I'll find yeah. it <laughs> um, man. let's see mm -hmm. okay how do you deal with horrible physical anxiety and thoughts as soon as you wake up in the morning? So this is actually a pretty common problem um, for anxiety to flare or peak for some people in the morning. It has to do with cortisol. Uh, I would say everything I say sounds so dismissive to me, but <laughs> I've been there. Mm -hmm. Um I would say to do your normal morning routine. Mm -hmm. um, I've also been told that drinking water can be very, I feel like this definitely could be compulsive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is my once a webinar reminder that I'm not a health, uh, not a mental health professional. I'm an advocate who has OCD, but um, I have read about drinking water with that helping somewhat in the morning mm -hmm. um yeah i feel like just redirecting if you're tempted to like uh, focus on the thoughts mm -hmm. yeah this is really relatable i definitely dealt with this a lot like right before getting diagnosed and then like shortly after and i found just like learning more about what the different compulsions are was really really helpful because I found like I would have this habit of just checking first thing in the morning like constantly checking in how do I feel like is this a bad OCD day am I still like fixated on the obsession that I was yesterday and it was really really discouraging because I didn't know that those were all compulsions and that it was making it worse and that I would do that all like first thing in the morning for whatever reason something about the association of like waking up that I'm mm -hmm. like it's a new day does it feel better today yeah yeah I have one hair that's sticking up. It's annoying me. 
All right, there we go. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I used to do the same thing. I'd wake up and be like, is the thought gone? Which also really relates to what I said about the pink elephant, because when you're mm -hmm. trying to see if the thought is gone, you're actually thinking about the thought anyway. Yeah, so relatable. <sighs> also, I do want to note we are running low on time. So mm -hmm. there is actually a chance we may not get to everyone's question. In fact, we almost definitely are not going to get to everyone's question. Mm -hmm. But um, definitely, there's they have these every week. So I would bring them to the next one. Um, mm -hmm. How can I help someone with harm and intrusive thoughts, OCD? Did you want to go? Sure. I guess just like so ways to be like supportive to that person. Definitely um, like not giving them reassurance, not helping them to do a compulsion in any way, not doing compulsions for them if they ask you to. Um, and kind of like, yeah, if, yeah, I guess along that same vein, if they're just asking you repeated questions over and over again, kind of pointing out like, hey, maybe we need to take a break from this, <laughs> uh, do something else. Um, and just like validate, just be like warm and validating, like explaining that you know how much it sucks, even kind of like educating yourself a bit, like watching some videos on what it's actually like living with OCD so that you can like relate to their experience. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Um, maybe to try to get to as many as we can in the next three minutes, we'll only have one of us answer sounds each good. one. Uh, but I agree with everything you said. Weird. Oh. Oop, now I'm kind of ruining this though because I don't know. Oh, there it is. Can you stop your thoughts from multiplying or your obsessions from growing? For example, I have a theme of bad character in a show and it spread to the rest. Is this preventable? Um, I feel like trying to prevent any theme or thought is doesn't work with OCD. It goes back to what I said about mm -hmm. trying not to have a certain thought does not work and trying to stop your OCD mm -hmm. from going somewhere, I feel like makes it go there faster, personally. Mm -hmm. So I want to say no, but if you move, I think you can move through it faster with the other characters if you know how to do it with one character. Yeah, that's my mm -hmm. thought. Um, <laughs> I have sexually intrusive thoughts how do I deal with those effectively so yeah I think just like responding to things in like a way that like welcomes uncertainty so maybe just saying maybe maybe not when you acknowledge the thought rather than yeah trying to push it away or trying to like instantly reassure yourself like oh this can't be true um, and just making sure you're not like kind of changing your life too much because of this or if you are a kid it's kind of unrealistic like try to take small steps back towards like the life that you want anyway despite of this so if you're like avoiding relationships or intimacy or certain things just like like definitely working on ERP with the sessions and then trying to take small steps back to like the kind of life that you want and that will also like motivate you along the way too yeah all right you want to do speed round I want to finish everybody <laughs> oh, we're pretty close to the end um, is it common with OCD to have night terrors and not be able to go back to sleep? Uh, I do think that having problems with sleep and OCD is pretty common. A lot of people obsess in their sleep. I don't know specifically mm -hmm. about night terrors, but I would talk to, if you are seeing someone for treatment, I would talk to them about it. Why does OCD attach itself to the ones you love the most? Uh, I'm not sure because... Uh, I can answer it. Yes, yeah, go for it. Um, it attaches to the people you love the most because if you didn't care about the content, then OCD would have nothing to do with it because mm -hmm. you're not afraid. Like there are lots of uncertainties you accept every day without thinking about it. Like if you'll get into a car accident or not. Um, but if it's not like a thing that you really fear and it like really isn't, I don't know, if, if you don't fear it and it's not important to you, OCD is not going to pick up on it because what like whatever if it happens it happens nice is it normal for someone with ROCD to have awful texting compulsions which method or tips can we use to get past this I think so um I, I would guess just yeah I think it's about like reviewing the text over and over again or maybe like rereading text for like reassurance things like that 
I think just kind of working on ERP and like deciding what you think is reasonable for yourself and what you want to be doing and then like work towards that goal. Yeah, that sounds good. Sorry, I was reading the next question. Uh, when you feel like you just, so I think this person was expanding on a different question about like it feeling like it's not you when you feel like you just relapse and then you get these feelings and actions, but they weren't in you and they happened. And then you get a thought to kneel down to ground to due to religious OCD. I'm not totally sure I understand the question still, um, but it sounds like OCD has a lot of intrusive thoughts, feelings and actions. So lots of weird stuff comes into our minds that we don't and bodies that we don't understand and um we maybe aren't even tied to our values aren't things we want um and they just come in and with ocd we have trouble letting them go out <laughs> this is the last question okay can my sister's recent ocd diagnosis be making her ocd worse i feel like since they told her that she has ocd she feels like she has to play the part of someone who has ocd <laughs> That is interesting. Do you have thoughts on this? I don't have a lot of thoughts on this right away. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, the only thoughts I have looking at this is that sometimes people feel this way about me, which can mm -hmm. be very hurtful. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that it kind of goes back to also what we said about Tia um, and building more to you um, mm -hmm. than having OCD. Um, I wouldn't I do think that it can make the OCD worse. I would agree with that, that you might, mm -hmm. they might be focusing on it a lot and forgetting other parts of their personality, but they mm -hmm. may also just feel really validated by the diagnosis and they may be understanding mm -hmm. a lot of things about their themselves that OCD was affecting that they didn't know before. Mm -hmm. So it may actually, they may just be realizing that more of their life is affected by OCD than they realized before they had been diagnosed. Hmm, that's a good point. Yeah. I feel like that's an important part of the process too, like unveiling everything that's that's interlaced with OCD so that you can start to like work on it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I get that because you want to make sure that it's not getting mm -hmm. worse. But it it's a pretty intense process to be diagnosed, especially with OCD. Um a lot of people suffer for a long time before the diagnosis comes. So there's a lot to kind of move through with that, I feel like. Uh, that was our last question. Um, we did have some people thanking us for our time, which is nice. These are our handles if you want to follow us on social media where we advocate. Uh, I am going to throw it in one more time. Um, Pink Elephant, you buy a stuffed animal for yourself. It donates one to a child in OCD residential treatment. You can get it at theoctopus.com. Um, and yeah. And Zoe, anything you want to add? No, that's it. Thanks everyone for coming and asking questions. It was really fun. Hopefully a bit helpful. Yeah, I had a good time. It was a good yeah. one. All right. We yeah. will see you soon.